This is a great project for the DIYers like to do crafts. These can easily be made with clothespins and some little uh, embellishments here. Um, I've done some of these with uh, flowers. I've done some with <clears throat> welcome signs. I love the chicken wire in the back. Um, this is also some extra little embellishment that I twisted on here. twisted wire on the back. Very simple. And all of these kits come complete with the clothespins um, and the, the thread. And then the very simple to make these go back on. Um, I like to stagger to get more of a depth on here. But these are great for projects for kids. I mean, they'd also be great for seniors. Um, and these can be changed out once you own the ring. You can purchase new clips. Um, some really pretty things that I've seen done is like sequence or bedazzle these with glitter or you could put some Mod Podge and some sprinkle some, some of the glitter on there. All of these clothespins have been hand dyed um, from the same product we use on our brim corn that we dye for resale and for our own custom brooms that we make. So you would receive the ring, the chicken wire, and the string all the necessary clothespins and the embellishments that you bought that are seen in the pictures from the kits. Now you do have to be very careful when you receive this because there are some sharp edges from the chicken wire and um, frankly I don't know how to get rid of them because we need them to twist around the, uh, the wreath frame here. Um, so you just need to be aware and careful when you are reassembling these. Um, I assemble them ahead of time. This particular one is using blue, yellow, and a very dark brown clothespin. Uh, I used it to highlight from the butterfly, colors from the butterfly. And I just added some um, flowers that I had sitting around, some artificial flowers. And these cute little signs go great on here. Um, what I also think would be really cute is if you had those mini clothespins that are like this big, um, you could use them to attach pictures, um, you know, stagger some pictures on here, multiple places. Okay, so very quickly, this string you just tie on here. Um, it'll be braided in a knot, and then you just tie it on here wherever you want um, to hang a wreath. The clothespins will be sorted in bags when you receive them. And then you just start wherever you would like. Um, I start next to one of these um, bracing pieces here. And I took too many off at the wrong spot. Let me back up here. So normally, let me back up here again. Flip this around because I'm right-handed and I like to work clockwise. Okay, so um, to get the 3D look here that the clothespins have some depth to them, we're going to be working off of this ring and this ring. Um, I'm going to start with yellow, and this one is using the third ring, so I'm going to start on the second ring. And you put it all the way through. Let me see if you can see that. I actually put it through so that the hole hits this little rounded wood clip right there. 
grips it nice and tight. And that one's down, so the next one is going to be up, and my color is blue. I'm going to start back one. See how it sits, leans back, and these lean front. That's very simple. Next color is brown. That one's up, so I'm going to start a down one. Again, we're going for that inner, that inner hole on the closed pin. I need to practice my colors. And so on and so forth, you just continue around the ring, putting all your favorite colors. Um, even if you get out of order, it's not that big of a deal because it really looks pretty. And you just keep going, going around here. Work away until your wreath is complete. Um, I do usually throw in an extra pin or two because sometimes the spacing is a little off between these. So sometimes 12 or 13 fit in between each little grid section on here. And this one I'm not sure if I want 12 or 13 in here. The yellow does fit so I'm going to leave it there. Um, you could, if, if it runs out of closed bins, you can space these out and you don't really see the gap. So I'm going to really quick here finish this up and we'll go back to the completed project. Okay, so I have completed the ring. Now I'm just going to attach with using just the wires that are in the background. They can be a little stiff. You may want to use gloves to protect your hand. You might want to use some needle nose pliers. I'm just going to use my hand right now because I feel comfortable doing it. And I'm just going to twist it wherever you want to put it on the, the chicken fence, chicken wire. Again, just be sure you're careful not to cut yourself or poke yourself. Um, and it's not on there real tight, it's just kind of twisted around. It's, it would have some space to move, but um, it shouldn't scratch your door. You want to make sure, or wherever you're hanging this, that your wire is not sticking out past the clothespins. Okay. And I liked the little flowers. Um, and here is where I just literally pin them in with the clothespin and then just manipulate the artificial flowers around. Um, I keep it as simple as possible and as very easy to be switched out and around should I choose to do that. And then I just like the wire. You could feed a piece of wire um, around these edges that have been um, cut. Um, but again, I also just use the clothespin that way I don't have to struggle with it. Um, this one might have to be down a little further. Oh, maybe not. Even it out. And there you have a cute little project. A bow. Um, obviously I put the welcome sign on crooked. Not on purpose. Um, if you want it on crooked, that's fine. I tend to be a little more particular about things like this. My husband has a different word for it, but um, I think I want my butterfly to be switched a little bit. There we go. And there you go. Door hanger. And I'll get a picture on my door so you can see what it looks like. Um, that would be one completed project. I have another one that I was working on um, without the the hemp, the hemp type thread for the door hanger. This one has a wire hook. Um, it is made with purple, blue, and gray. This one would also, if you're into bedazzling, I think this one would look really sharp with some, um, some bedazzling happening on there. Um, I did notice, I just noticed it now, that this one has 
it didn't work out with the pattern. You can see right here, these two are at the same level, but that's no problem because I'm just going to unclip my flower arrangement here, my little flowers, artificial flowers, maybe. This one really twisted. And I'm just going to hide it with the, whoops, artificial flowers. If I can find where this one goes. There we go. No big deal, that one just popped off. So I am going to just clip this into one of these, hide my little pattern flaw, position my flower a little bit, and now I have a nice little color wreath. I do like the chicken wire, and this would most likely have the chicken wire behind it as well. I just like the look of the chicken wire. I do have one more to show you that I did. This one is where I first started trying this craft. It also has the hemp type hanger. And I made a lovely little bow here that didn't stay attached. So I'm just gonna pin it back in with a clothespin. This one has a black welcome sign. I may, just to make this stay down, I may actually just slide it over a clothespin there so you can't see it. Actually, it'll give it a little more lift to the bow as well. And this one, I, I'm going to be dyeing the broom, the pine cones, uh, pine cones, the clothespins, the wooden clothespins. This one was actually painted. Um, I needed to entertain my niece for an entire weekend. So we chose to paint, which is a real pain unless you enjoy painting, because you can see we have lots of white spaces in here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can see in the middle here, you can see the white spaces um, in the closed pins. I don't know if I'm holding this to the camera right, but if you can see it, some of the closed pins are missing the paint at the hard to reach places with clothes pins. Now you don't really notice it from the front, um, but this is the benefit from my hand dyes. I think this one's really cute for like the seashore. If I had some shells or something, I might embellish it a little bit with some, with some shells. Um, but the, the, the options are limited, uh, limitless that you can do with these. And like I said, once you have the kit with the chicken wire on it, um, you can change these clothespins out to whatever combinations you want. We do offer multiple dyed colors. You can mix and match. You know, maybe you have um, a decorate a decor item that you wanted to put on your wreath or a different type of sign. Um, it wouldn't take much to do that. It takes about 75 clothespins to do the project. And this is a wreath that measures. Once completed, it measures about 16 inches wide across from the end of the clothespin to the other end of the clothespin is approximately 16 inches. So there you have it. All of the materials can be found on our website at etsy.com slash shop slash Meckley Brooms. And you can look in my craft supplies for the wreaths. Um, I do offer a whole wreath kit where you pick the whole kit. But then, like I said, if you change your mind for a season or a holiday and you want to buy supplies, use your kit, but replace the clothespins, um, you can purchase the dyed clothespins. What makes the dyeing really nice is the dye gets everywhere. It goes in all the crevices that paintbrushes can't reach. Um, the one thing you need to know is that these are all non-toxic dyes. I do not use preservatives. So do not use these for cl um, your clothing. They will bleed onto your wet clothing if you're using these outside. But these clothespins will also be great for um, decor ideas for bridal showers, baby showers. You wanna pin up those picture walls and those colored pictures. 
Um, just don't use it on clothing fabrics because I'm afraid, at least definitely not wet ones. Um, the only place that a wooden clothespin sometimes doesn't get is right there on the inside, but that is usually hidden when you close the clothespin. So there you go. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope I gave you some helpful information.